Really, I yeah. only see darkness. Okay, and that's why you made me that huge list of stuff after our trip? Yes. It has two sides. Yes. Oh. We're going to start with new coolant fluid. Oh, because our last, <laughs> our last coolant is now in the Alps on some mountain pass. Exactly. Oh, shit. I think our coolant hose exploded. Ooh. Oh no, what are we going to do now, Christian? So we're going to replace the coolant fluid. I don't know if we're going to do anything with a parking brake today. But Christian also wants to replace my cheap Chinese Android head unit with the OEM ones and install a okay. Bluetooth radio. We can do all that. Mm, these are not nice noises. <laughs> Christian, oh, Christian, you're not gonna go underneath now. It's Monday evening after our trips to the Western Alps and Christian wants to see if we have any chips in our oil. Look at my freshly painted frame, all dirty from the Western Alps. That is not OEM, that is our endoscope camera. He has it pointed towards the prop shaft. So we can keep an eye on it. <laughs> We're gonna be all quiet and here is Shh. All quiet. Yes. All quiet. I heard it. I heard the oil running down, okay, when I loosened the filter cap. So it's definitely working here. We're not even gonna look at this filter. What? We're gonna take the oil pan out and look in the oil pan. So this is how you do that, okay? You use it. Let me see the question. Oh, we don't have an oil leak for the first time ever. ever. If there would be any oil here in the front, okay, you would see it on my gloves. There is nothing. Okay, so this is 2000 kilometer old 5W40. You can also see that it's not 100% dark, okay? It looks dark on camera, but I can look through actually still. Really, I yeah. only see darkness. Oh, the oil looks so and good. Be because we had a major coolant disaster on the trail. Okay, don't <gasps> smoking. Go, don't go below, okay? It will dribble on your head. Just set it. It's unbelievable. I'm not below. Of course you are. No, I'm here. There's nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Pour this leftover oil in here. And we look for any kind of glitter in there, and there is absolutely nothing. Of course okay, not. Here. Done down here. Yeah, I wanted to change the transfer case oil, but Christian doesn't want to. This is only a courtesy check now, because we didn't find anything in the oil pan. We're not gonna find anything here. There's one right here. See this one? That's old stuff. No, no, see there? There's one right here. Yeah, we don't want to find stuff, so... Well, this could be debris which was in the engine left over or any kind of bearing where we would have found something in the oil pan and we would see a significant amount yeah. here. And we're going to check the filter in 2,000 kilometers again and we should not see anything there. I will have those 2,000 kilometers in three weeks. Okay, brand new MAN. M-A-N-N. -N. Okay. Put it in here. Oh, you didn't change the seal. Well, they're only 2,000 kilometers old. What we have to do next is replace the coolant. Replace the Alpine Creek water <laughs> with real coolant. You're yeah. About. 5W40. And this basically completes the engine rebuild. It's now to be considered successful. Oil change done. So Christian put a mark here. I got a mark over here as well. This is going to the front axle. This is going to the rear axle, obviously. And so I'm going to hold this here at this location. And now we're going to check how much backlash we got. This is our backlash. It's not a lot. It's just noisy. It's not a lot. So I don't know if the gear, if the chain inside is worn out. But the good thing is we knocked off one item that was the oil change and we did not find any problem. Yes. But I got to fix the other 20 items she wrote down. Okay? And the next thing has to be the wishwash fluid. 
We'll do that tomorrow evening after work. Leave it in gear, otherwise it's gonna roll away because the parking brake isn't working. For everything you do on a, on a discovery, you have to take off those skid plates. On any off-road rig, which goes every day wading and going through sand and desert like we over here in Germany. <laughs> exactly. The problem is that this is a new hose. <laughs> it was never off before. So don't forget to close the clamp. I, Otherwise we're gonna to have to spend another 22 euros on unnecessary coolant liquid. 10 liters of coolant what we lost are 22 euros in Germany. So my mistake cost us a few hours on our vacation. And, and an overheated engine. An overheated engine which almost busted. Yeah. Okay, that's good, seated. But the secret is yeah. there's one behind it too. Oh shit. And if I suck this into my tester, you can see only one ball is floating. The other one is barely coming up. So two balls floating is only minus 10 degree. Okay. We don't have those temperatures right now. Well, it's minus 10 Fahrenheit actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's even colder. It's stream water out of the Alps. Who yeah. knows how many cows peed into this. <laughs> so let me get new coolant liquid out of my freshly organized spare parts room we stocked up on all the oils gear oils transmission oils engine oils we even have 5w dumbass for the mercedes and lucas's audi and lots of 5w40 lots of oil filters we have a complete box of that's what you need camshaft seals crankshaft seals stuff here look at that most importantly right now is coolant. I think this will fit. Ten, yes. 10 liters is all we need. He's going to make a mess. Don't say that. It's going to be a long video if you film this. Taking the wheel off is going to be really interesting. Yes, it is. It's more interesting than filling the coolant. Now, we had a parking brake failure on vacation. And simply what happens is you get that loud squeaking noise in the back. When you have that noise, just don't use your brake anymore because if it happens several times, your actuator will jam up and then you have to take it out. But if you actually stop using it once you have that noise, all you gotta do is reset now your parking shoes to the correct distance and it will work again. For our desktop mechanics, we did not do the bedding in procedure, okay? Shame on us. Taking off the wheel spacer, <coughs> which we love. I got the adjuster wheel now in the locked position. It got to have about 45 newton meters to turn it. I measured that with my calibrated fingers. And all I got to do now is move the adjuster wheel eight clicks back. Okay. One, two, eight. And this side should be done. So after adjusting the adjuster wheel, I got to open the wedge screw here. Tap it with a soft mallet hammer all the way around and close it back up. Good, that side is done. Now we do the other side. Yeah, I got brand new lock. So don't miscount. Incredible. Okay. All good. Checking out that everything is safe. Yep. Did you talk the wheel spacers? You know, I was... you go upstairs, get a coffee, I do the work, you come back down and then you ask me if I talk. It's fall now here. I had to get my hat and my fleece jacket. Yes, and then you have to doubt that the work I did in the meantime was incomplete. Did you <laughs> talk the wheel spaces and you're going to say yes or no? <laughs> I think I did. I'm actually not quite sure. <laughs> Torquing the lock nuts to 140 newton meters, like the wheel spacer nuts. Like eventually. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You can. <laughs> can I knock off your long? You can list? knock off two things. So Vera is bending the wheel arch liner away. Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna have to stick my head in here. Oh my god! Look, I show you guys. Um, I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna have to switch these two hoses. 
What basically happens right now is if you spray water on the front, the rear wiper turns on. If you spray water on the back, the front wiper turns on. Yeah, it's spraying in the back when I'm using the wiper in the back and now in the front. So that's working now. Excellent. Working just beautifully. Only works on the third time, remember. Not every time you spray. Crossing off the wish wash hoses. I actually forgot to cross off the oil change, which we already did. What is it? Beautiful engine. What? Oops. Yeah. Okay, you gotta have a bit of a cool and smell in the <laughs> You broke something. Turn it off. It's gonna break now. What's that noise now? Well put. I think it's because the belt is wet. Oh, okay. If it doesn't go away, I'm gonna take your car tomorrow. I just spilled coolant on the belt and that was the noise. It's all quiet now. Yeah, I can give you a heart attack. <laughs> Next thing we want to do is fix our oil pressure sensor and oil pressure gauge, which is right here. And the gauge inside the vehicle is up there. Yeah, it died during a minus 20 degrees night. And for that, I got to disconnect our installation here, which is quite complex. Look. Yeah. So here goes our old gauge. And I bought you a new gauge. I hope it fits. This gauge is digital. Ah, okay. But PSI. I don't do PSI. Well, you're gonna have to do PSI now, too. Yep, that works. We're just gonna glue this in a little bit. We're gonna wire this back up. The entire wiring in the Discovery is done. Red is black and plus is minus. If you follow that rule, you will never have a problem. Did you guys see those defenders burn down on a train back in here in Germany? That was really nearby. We did see the smoke. Yeah. Brand new vehicle. Some suckers waiting for their cars now another two years. Oh my god. Yeah. If you guys are asking us for the wiring diagram, right here it is. <laughs> okay, so even if it's blue, it's still gonna work. Yeah. So what is the pressure in PSI? Some PSI is less bar. Say what? So I used an online converter. 0 0.7 bar is the oil pump should have in idle mode. <laughs> and it says it's 101 PSI. I don't think that's right. I think that's the online converter what the engineers from the TDV6 used when they designed the oil pressure. Oh that my God. We got to install this sensor here. That's a little different than the one yep. installed. The old one is a two wire sensor. And the new one is a one-wire sensor. I think it's a good idea to use the sensor which is supplied with the oil pump. <gasps> There's oil running out. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, we'll put some Loctite on here just in case. Yes. Here. Yep. Blue Loctite in a red bottle. So that's the ground wire. That's we want to use the signal wire, which is this one. Ooh. And it's displaying something. Well, is it now good or not? We're gonna have to use the correct website to calculate <laughs> what the PSI are. It's, yeah. It used to be at startup about three and a half bar. So we'll check what this is and then I can put you a little sticker here. But yeah. it looks good, okay. Okay, that's good again. Oh, look, there's even a warning light here. Oh, okay, oh, there's it's a, on. Wait, well, it's on because the engine is not running. Okay, this flickering is only on camera. Now it goes through some sort of a calibration procedure. It shows 39 again. It reacts. 36 PSI is 2.5 bars and 44 is 3 bars. It's looking good. I'm going to have to isolate this cable here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is install the OEM display here again into our Discovery. Because we got a cheap Chinese head unit here. This unit sucks because if there's sunlight outside, you can't really see anything. 
and we want to use this unit as a Bluetooth device. So this is going to replace the DAB plus radio. It's going to replace the hands-free speaker system and also the Bluetooth music play from the phone. And all that I'm going to connect back up to the original head unit. I like to have the off-road display. Yes, I, that's cool. one thing we've been missing, the off-road yeah. display. For the money it costs, and we've had it for three years now, it works great. And did you notice? You got one PSI oil pressure, even your engine is not running. Yeah, that's cheap Chinese. I don't want Vera around when I'm doing that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Holy crap. This was at one point a lot of work to install this and to wire all this up. And now I'm taking it out, which kind of sucks. Okay. Oh, I already see a problem. This antenna connector is different. So here's the original Land Rover display. And before I put this in the vehicle, I'm gonna change this to the Range Rover menu. There are four screws right here. So now I can take that bezel off here. You see this cable coming out here. And the middle yellow cable is what I want to pull out. So I got this pin out now. Here, this is what this looks like, okay, with the pin removed. You can see that. Now, if you wanna really tinker with this, you could actually connect the switch and then you could shift back and forth between the Range Rover menu and the regular Discovery menu. I think that would work on the fly. Now I gotta feed this cable back in here. Put this little bezel back on. There. There. Now with the Range Rover menu, I should be able to connect now a rear view camera. In order to do that, I have to connect the camera right here. This is what's called a Fakra connector, which looks like this. And I need an adapter cable, which you can get easily from Amazon. It's a Fakra connector adapter cable to change, okay? So you can see that right here. $13.99, sometimes they're only like $8.99. And you plug this here into the brown one. I can connect now my cheap Chinese rear view camera here which I got right here. This installs instead of one of the license plate lights into the Discovery. You can get that from Amazon also for only like 25 euros. Instead of installing the screen with me, Vera is actually collecting her walnuts. She thinks that's more exciting. I built this thing about 10 years ago, okay? It's made out of spring wires and she just rolls it over the ground. So do it, show it to our viewers. See? And it picks up the walnuts. Yeah. So she looks for them. Look at this walnut here. Oop. And it's in the basket, okay? Yeah. And when it's all full, she just spreads those wires apart and then she got lots of walnuts from our walnut trees. Over there in my wheelbarrow. Okay. <laughs> and that is, of course, much more exciting than installing that display with me. Now I got this all back in. There's my Fakra cable. And now... I put the screen temporarily in place. Comes up with a screen, that's already good. Now you see I got the Range Rover menu and with the Range Rover menu, I have 4x4 info without changing any settings using the gap tool. So this is really great. What I want to know now is if I connect now my rear view camera here. Okay. See if we start the vehicle, what it does. It's not getting me the rear view camera yet. So I changed the setting using the gap tool and enabled now the rear parking camera. Wow, and check this out here. We got a rear view now. All I had to do is change the car config here to enable the rear view parking camera. This is still the old camera, which is behind the windshield and it's not very wide angle. So I am gonna replace that camera with that little one being installed in the license plate light. I think that's a much slicker version. Vera can play with her phone over onto our new Bluetooth unit here. And she can also select the next title here. Oh my God, I never had that before. So <laughs> that's like the best. Yeah, so you can still also use FM here. And here we got now 4x4 info. This never worked before. Okay. Oh, really? 
Yeah, we never had this in this car. And the language, you can actually go and adjust this U.S. To English. U.S. English? Yes, please. Oh, now all our British viewers gonna be, why do you want U.S. English? <laughs> because that's... I wonder what's different now. The car doesn't have any trousers. It has a hood. <laughs> I also need to get a 90 degree cable. This really sucks that the Chinese gave us a straight cable. The Chinese gave us this cable here, which sticks out like half a mile. So I bought like a little adapter. And this little adapter is like putting it into an angle, okay? Then I had to buy an adapter for the antenna and also in 90 degrees. So now And take looks, half my car apart again, yeah. as you might see. Now it looks somewhat decent. Here is a cable. And here I had to buy another extension cable and an adapter because one of the Chinese party doesn't talk to the other Chinese party <laughs> and the stuff don't fit together. Then you would think that you push a button and this thing runs, but no. It, you don't. You have, you, to, read the instructions. you have to actually read these instructions <laughs> translated from Chinese. So this is just too much for us Western world people. For you men. So her Bluetooth radio is working. I got this all fixed. It looks somewhat okay with my adapter cables. All that mess is back in here. And I got the Chinese antenna debacle fixed. So this was another thing on the list. So Vera is going to go on a 300 kilometer trip today. Yes. One way. One way, exactly. Yes, without me. But with Robin. So. There's Robin. I don't have any tools with me. You don't need any tools. You got Robin. He can fix it with a hammer. So explain what's supposed to be broken. The transfer case is broken. There is no chance in the world that the transfer or case is broken. The half shafts are broken or the prop shafts are broken. Something is broken badly. So let's just say everything is broken. Let's go on a test drive. You got a key? Yes. You hear that? Oh my God. Whoa. It's definitely on that side. Oh my god. And I hope I can just put this together now and it snaps in. Oh my god. It's been a long day.